Hi, my name is Heather Feather. I am the owner of Rare Bird Medicine, and today I wanted to talk about privilege and suffering. These topics really kind of seem to go together, and I feel like um, I should give a warning. Warning. If you do not have a comprehensive empathy system around suffering, you may find your ego triggered. You'll know it's triggered because you'll feel righteous and angry. Perfect. Please stop watching if that happens. <laughs> this video is not for you. So, <clears throat> I have considered a lot. What is an individual? What is a soul? What is the journey that a quote-unquote soul takes? From Heather Feather's perspective, there is one thing. It's called life. Life has a spirit. It is unified. It always has been. It always will be. It's also known as energy. It cannot be created nor destroyed. It takes many forms. However, ego, which is one of the qualities in the forms that it takes, has a extreme attachment to individuality, to labels, and will hold individuation superior always. And so I ask myself, what suffering is more superior to another person's suffering? To me, none. Suffering is suffering. <laughs> there's, there's the amount of time you can spend suffering. Sure, there's the magnitude of that suffering, but suffering is suffering. If you are hurting, if you are in pain, that is not pleasant. There is suffering that can occur from privilege, and privilege is where a specific group of people or persons are given opportunity or are extended greater ease in the way that they experience this thing called life comparative to another group of persons or group of people. So let's start, let's start where some, some privilege changed in the 50s. I have been a witch for several lifetimes, and in this lifetime, I'm finally not going to get burned at the stake or thrown in the river, and I'm going to get to create a college, a Hogwarts of sorts, um, and I'll have a magical brick-and-mortar school before I exit flesh costume in this lifetime. So that's my intent. That is my focus. It wasn't until the 50s that we repealed and revoked all laws that would vilify mediumship or qualities of what a witch would practice in their craft, in their art, in their religion if they're Wiccan, in their faith tradition, in their philosophy system. Um, so in the 50s, just in the 50s, we started letting people with my belief matrix be not, you know, illegal, <laughs> an illegal practice. So four minutes ago, essentially, in the annals of time. In 1990, the World Health Organization still categorized homosexuality as an illness. And it was in the 90s that a brave woman was willing to question this. And she said, if this is an illness, we should be able to prove that it is an illness. So I would like to see the proof. And guess what? They're not able to prove it's an illness because it's not. <laughs> because it's not. So that law was repealed in the 90s. So one second ago. And right here in the here and now, you have people, even though slavery has ended, you have people, and I don't know if you've ever heard of the KKK or white supremacy groups, but they still exist and they have members. And some of those members could be judges and are, could be police officers and are. Does this mean every judge and every police officer is a white supremacist? No, that's not what that means. <laughs> no. Um, it does mean that there can be people in positions of power that do not have equanimity, equality as a foundational way of being in the way that they hold and utilize their power. And so additionally, aside from just being a member of the KKK or being a white supremacist, people can have a lot of racism, a lot of not understanding of that which they are not. And so that can cause many people of color, many of people in the black community to feel when they get pulled over as if they're either going to be shot and killed in the same way that hate crimes happen against the LGBTIQ plus community. I actually think we should always include intersex, 
But as much as hate crimes can occur in that community, it also can occur in a community where we have racism. And racism is alive and well today, unfortunately. So because evolution happens for each individual at a different rate. So privilege is where you have a group of people that are given fewer rights, some level of oppression, some level of suffering as a result of not being treated in an equanimous, equal way to other two-leggeds in the same paradigm. So, so when we talk about privilege, there's a lot of conversation around white privilege. And I can tell you when I drive my car, without question, as a white woman, I do not think I'm going to go to jail when I get pulled over by a police officer. I've had them yell at me. I've had them say, stop crying like a little baby. I mean, I'm a sensitive and I don't vilify that. <laughs> so Heather loves to cry. I've, I've been yelled at. I've had them spit in my face. I've had different things happen from two leggeds that are in a position of power and misusing it. And those are two leggeds that are in a dysfunctional state. I mean, it might help to have people in positions of power in counseling and psychologically evaluated and things of that nature doesn't mean every person there are people of color in positions of power that are judges that are police officers so that's not universal we tend to as two-leggeds want to take something and just apply it to everyone if you're white you're a white supremacist okay okay let's slow our roll a little bit life is an eternal unified blob of energy that will infinitely change form it didn't separate and never separated it's not going to and it will exist forever so truly anyone's suffering is my suffering anyone's suffering is your suffering and it is important to consider that all two-legged suffer and no, I, I personally do not think any level of suffering is superior. For example, I am a woman. I've experienced lots of very rapey men in this world. There are two-legged heteronormative penis havers that are very rapey and very much think that they have the right to take what they want from a woman's body. And, you know, they can just do that. <laughs> and that happens a lot. Does that mean that I'm now going to hate men and that all men are bad and that all men are wrong? Not even remotely. Actually, there are several males that walk this earth school that are the example to me of how to evolve. The Dalai Lama, Thich Nhat Hanh, Mohandas Karamshan Gandhi. Um, recently, for my witchcraft, witchcraft class, I've been studying Gerald Gardner and Raymond Buckland and Scott Cunningham. These are people, you know, Scott Cunningham died at 36 from complications from AIDS, produced 22 books before he exited. I didn't achieve that by the time I was 36. Like, he's a very powerful person that is trying to liberate the philosophy and focus of witchcraft. Anyone can be a witch like anyone can be a Buddhist. And he was trying to liberate that from the very oppressive and tyrannical history where an estimated 9 million witches were tortured and murdered like me in a previous life. So as you know, I'm not a YOLOer. And I definitely do not believe now, nor will I ever believe, that all I'm ever going to be is a white woman. My Dharma profile is actually based on my past life in Egypt as a male. So African male. Right now, I'm doing Caucasian female. I mean, Scotch, Irish, German, French, Italian, whatever. <laughs> a blend of the bloods in the female form. So there are certain aspects of privilege that comes from perhaps a given sensitivity that may be at times offered to women. And there are certain levels of suffering that have been offered to me for having the flesh costume of a woman. In that same vein, there are certain levels of privilege I am offered by having this color of skin due to the magnitude of racism and the number of two-leggeds that still need to evolve on that topic that many evolved on <laughs> a while ago. Like, there are some that are just not up to speed in their evolution. And um, there are some that 
are Christian and they're not facing recrimination and judgment for sharing their philosophies. They're not facing the bias and oppression of what they choose to believe in the same way I would if I share my philosophy, which is one of the things that I do in these videos. And that then becomes oppressive. So when we consider privilege, it's important to note that everyone is privileged right now from what I'm reading, from what I'm seeing, to criticize and attack white males. Okay, that is hateful. It is oppressive. And you're never going to regain liberation. You're never going to be on the side of justice if you have been oppressed and you then become the oppressor. That's not, that's not how we balance the scales. And this is a common two-legged paradigm where if the pendulum's been way over here in oppressing a given people while others have faced privilege, that we wanna just push it back and be like, you know what, screw a bunch of white males. Some of the most beautiful humans I have met, a human that I'm engaging with right now, just beautiful inside and out, white male. <laughs> Some of the teachers that I'm going to use to do my destiny and fulfill my life's work of creating a magical accredited college, white males. So it's easy to assume that ego wants to assume if this, then that, if this group of males that hurt my body and started assaulting it when I was an infant and again took my virginity as a teenager and then just those experiences kept happening, if that happened, then all men must lack the capacity to have reverence for the female, to understand that a female is a mind, and to understand that she also is a heart with feelings. And that's not true. I do understand normative, it's very normative in our culture to talk about women's bodies, you know? It's very normative to be like, oh, this waitress, oh, she had such a figure. And I hear this from gents all the time. Oh, you wouldn't believe the figure on that waitress. It's like, okay, but how was her mind? How was her service? I don't go around being like, oh my gosh, you would not believe the waiter and the package he had on him and his buns. And I'm not trying to vilify anyone's language, but let's consider, let's consider how we're talking about our fellow man, our fellow woman, our fellow they. So if you have the privilege of going through an entire life without wanting to commit suicide because you feel like you're in the wrong body, wow, what a privilege for you to spend an entire life feeling like you are in the correct body. How blessed you are. So you can easily turn around with your faith tradition that would say 70 times seven forgive and don't judge. And you could judge a group of people like the trans community and try to act like they're pedophiles in the bathroom. When we know most pedophiles are heteronormative males. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> is this thing on? <laughs> people just make up stuff. What we have is a trans community wanting to be able to safely go to the bathroom without being having a hate crime enacted upon them. But if you decided to judge that, and if you decided to vilify that, I'm not here to tell you to evolve right now. Maybe you're gonna take more lifetimes to do it. You know, I'm, I, I will hold high thoughts for your expeditious evolution. However, I don't think that it is, um, I don't think that any two-legged has authority on suffering. I have suffered greatly in this life. Today, I got to bury three baby birds. My favorite thing in the world is birds. The thing I do the most is hang out with Hades and he loves to show me what he touches. Touch it, touch it, touch it. Oh, super. I'll get back to burying since I should have been an undertaker instead of a magical college maker. Not the most fun day for me. Not the most privileged feeling day. However, when I went to the grocery store, there was a privilege that was present when I was driving because if I got pulled over by a white racist, he's not going to take me to jail or try to find reasons to incarcerate me. And people of color in the black community are facing a history in which they were denied education, in which they were being abused, they were being sexually assaulted by the master of the house. That's all getting handed down in the intelligence of their DNA. So you can have no empathy, you can have no compassion for someone's suffering, but any direction you do it, if you are choosing to take a group and hate on them, 
trust you've got some evolution to be doing. May we hold higher thoughts for each two-legged and the suffering they face. Blessed be.